two. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, so it's a very long title. Um, but uh, yeah, let me uh, uh, motivate the, the work. Uh, yeah, so a couple of years ago we did the uh, one shot acquisition to dynamic VR avatars, and this was motivated by a desire to have people share virtual reality experiences. And uh, key, key to this uh, was, you know, be able to chat with each, each other in VR. And uh, it was earlier work, so we only uh, achieved a lip motion via a audio signal. So it was mostly like a lip flap. And uh, it was using OVR lip sync, if you're familiar with, with that uh, software. Uh, so it was relatively uh, low fidelity. Uh, uh, but it, it gave an initial uh, uh, attempt at uh, collaboratively having conversations in, in VR. Uh, so uh, we, we'd like to do better. So we. Uh, ex uh, a attempt to uh, capture facial motions within the, the HMD using a, a HMD mounted camera and uh, close to the mouth, ergonomically mounted so it's not like far ahead and you're not bumping into things with the, the camera mount uh, and, and therefore it needs a wide field of view uh, for the eyes. We uh, use pupil labs, cameras and uh, both are infrared with high frame rate. Uh, so uh, we're using those to drive the facial movements uh, to in turn drive an avatar or a digital double uh, version of yourself uh, and ideally work with anyone without a calibration uh, uh, you know, uh, process to, to slow down the work. So uh, this uh, typically involves a, a data challenge. So estimating the face motion requires thousands of manually annotated images to train your particular solver of choice. And in the bottom left, we have a, a deep learning approach that's uh, going from the images direct to the blank shapes. And in the bottom right is a, a well-known uh, iBug data set that I, I, you can use a ensemble of uh, regression uh, trees to parse to uh, locate the landmarks uh, just by those image observations. So uh, often there's many such data sets with many photos but uh, these don't match the intrinsics of the, the cameras that we're mounting ergonomically within the HMD. Uh, so face tracking with uh, these existing uh, photo data sets so uh, that doesn't work well at all I, I, okay so so that leads us to the key, key question how can we recycle recycle some of these existing data sets uh, for use with uh, very different cameras uh, and a bit more detail on our camera setup so uh, a really cheap uh, mount camera that's a uh, quite low, low resolution but as a wide <laughs> A angle of view so we can cover the, the whole lower region of your face uh, but at a close distance uh, and the eye tracking cameras are 120 hertz uh, from pupil labs again quite low resolution uh, our source data set of choice uh, was this Cybuck 300W data set that's 15,000 uh, labeled casual photos uh, because we are Disney we I actually paid for a licensed version of this that's uh, composed of uh, uh, people with Creative Commons photos so that we're not uh, infringing any any licenses. Uh, the academic community can obviously use this uh, 300W data set without uh, such restrictions. Uh, so this, this gave us a good broad uh, data set uh, but as I say it doesn't match the HMD cameras so I, we uh, performed a, a process uh, to, to re recycle that data 
the the solver that we chose in particular is also well known uh, from Wheeler um, and some more regression trees method. Uh, that gave us real time performance uh, with reasonably good quality results and there's some uh, parameters of the, the solver that we used. Uh, so in in our approach to, to warping the the source data photos to the target cameras, uh, we took a divide and con conquer approach. So we uh, split them out and eyes uh, naturally to, to match the cameras that we have. Uh, so this is the, the eye warping steps that we, we took. Uh, so from a given source photo, we're using those landmarks to uh, isolate the, the eye region. Uh, we're rotating the, the image to match the orientation of the pupil labs eye cameras. Uh, and then we're cropping and doing a, a spherical warp. And then uh, that spherical warp then creates gaps, so we, we do an image in painting process and that matches relatively closely to the observed image from the from the pupil labs camera. Uh, so, so here's an example of the mappings uh, of resulting on the mouth region and the eye regions. Uh, and so you can see the, the rel relevant uh, landmarks that are uh, appropriate to each area. So uh, we, we found that that was a, 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 a good at uh, uh, discovering the shape. Uh, however, the robustness was far improved by using a local uh, binding box segmentation further in addition to the, to the, uh, the, the, the warping of the, the image data. So I, uh, we're showing here a few steps that we took in combination of different uh, modalities of, of the segmentation to combine to get quite a good estimate of the, the mouth region. So uh, this is a comparison with the predictor results that are completely wrong <laughs> without say uh, this mouth bounding box calculation to localize the, the solver. I, I, and as you can see on the right, our a, a, a more robust method uh, captures the, the lip shape more, more accurately. A, and then our, our method comparison with the, a, our, our method, our standard predictor that's unmodified, but also using the bounding box <coughs> calculation and the, the ground truth manual labeling. So, uh, we show a 80% uh, improvement on that uh, case. Uh, and in the case of the eyes, uh, we also benefited from additional information like the location of the illuminators, uh, infrared illuminators. So we use those to determine uh, whether your eye was blinking uh, and then also the, the days of the threshold of the pupil region uh, helps us uh, uh, have provided additional information to, to get the gaze direction. Uh, and uh, as a comparison, again, for, for ground truth, our uh, warp method is uh, finding the contour of the, the eye line uh, more accurately than the un unrecycled training images. So with all that, we can now drive animated avatars. So uh, here we have a process of using those landmark predictions to, to drive the uh, activations of the blend shapes uh, for a, a relatively simple avatar animation. So we uh, initially calibrate with the neutral pose based, based landmark locations. And then for each new cam capture frame, the distance between those calibrated locations and the new uh, predicted locations uh, directly drive the activations of the blend shapes. So it's a relatively simple example of uh, driving an avatar. And this is a, a video result. So you notice quite uh, a lot of noise with the, the DLib shape predictor. We also do a Kalman filter to, to smooth out that noise. 
and, and uh, but we're able to capture them out of a uh, location uh, shape uh, with, with greater fidelity than just an audio based uh, approach uh, and also the eye gaze. And so performance, uh, our system implemented in Unity runs at 30 frames a second, uh, fully functional uh, and this is our breakdown of of each of the, the steps of the algorithm. So the landmark prediction is actually super quick, uh, but our robustness steps for the segmentation take a little bit longer in the, in the approach that we implemented it with Unity scripts. Uh, so it could be actually a lot faster than this. Um, so we I uh, saw so, uh, a real-time live uh, last year, uh, Babylon, I'm, I'm not sure if any of you have seen this uh, before at uh, SIGGRAPH, uh, where they're using an iPhone X to uh, do real-time performance capture. It was really uh, successful when it was real-time live last year. Uh, so we wanted to compare uh, that approach. So say we just had an iPhone X camera in front of you on, a, on, on the HMV, but we found that the tracking uh, was lost uh, with partial coverage of your face and also uh, with certain with, uh, so we so, uh, couldn't really uh, you know, out of the box apply the same method without uh, you know, and still have a, an ergonomic solution. Uh, and uh, this is with a uh, very good uh, state-of-the-art software package for Israel Live. Uh, again, we're comparing with uh, a similar tracking scenario and, it, uh, and again, it sort of fails uh, within a certain range with a regular uh, webcam. And with a GoPro, with a wide field of view, uh, again, it, it uh, fails with, without coverage of the face and uh, close to the mouth. So, in conclusion, uh, regular photography labeled images uh, data sets can, can be recycled uh, for use with different cameras uh, through automated processes for cropping and warping. Uh, we did need to apply these additional measure, measures of mouth region estimation and, and blink detection. Uh, so in, um, overall, we uh, improved in comparison with the same software on, on posting unprocessed data sets. Uh, their choice of VLIB was just uh, convenient. Uh, there's better state-of-the-art algorithms now for, for face tracking that we can reuse those uh, data sets where available. Uh, okay, so thank you. <laughs>